Hello friends, this video on transport in plants and animals part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly look at some of the questions. Question number one. Match column 1 with column 2. So we have a couple of stuffs in column 1 and a few in column 2. So let's try to match them. Stomata. So what do you think stomata helps? Stomata are the tiny pores through which exchange of gases takes place. Loss of water also takes place due to evaporation. So stomata will match to transpiration. Xylem. Xylem helps in conduction of water and minerals. So transport of water. Root hairs. So root hairs, what do they do? They absorb water from the soil. So this would be absorption of water. Phloem. Phloem also helps in conduction but it helps to transport food from leaves to various other parts of the plant. Question number two. Fill in the blanks. Blood from the heart is transported to all parts of the body by so, which are the blood vessels which carry blood from heart to other body parts? Exactly, arteries. And which are those blood vessels which does exactly the opposite? They are veins. So, veins carry it from different body parts to heart. Hemoglobin is present in dash cells. So, which component of blood contains hemoglobin? The one which is red in color because hemoglobin is a red pigment. So, whichever cells contain hemoglobin, they will be red in color. So, they are present in red blood cells which are also called RBCs. Arteries and veins are joined by a network of so as we have seen that artery, arteries branch to form arterioles, similarly veins are formed, veins form venules and they are connected by very thin blood vessels called capillaries. Rhythmic expansion and contraction of the heart is called heartbeat and that is what we can feel. So if you actually uh, touch the place near your heart, you'll be able to feel this rhythmic movement. Main excretory product in human beings is, so which is the main most important nitrogenous wastes in human beings? It is urea. In case of aquatic animals like fishes, it is mostly uh, ammonia. And in case of amphibians like reptiles or uh, lizards, birds, insects, so in their cases it is uric acid. Sweat contains water and salts. And you can actually test the presence of salts in sweat because in, in, during summer when you sweat too much, that time you can see that red white patches appear on dark colored clothes. Kidneys eliminate the waste materials in the liquid form called urine. So urine is the main product which is excreted out of our body. Water reaches great heights in the trees because of suction pull caused by which is that pull so that pull happens due to transpiration because due to transpiration the leaves lose water so they try to pull up water from the below parts so as a result a net upward pull is created for water and this pull is called transpiration pull question number three choose the correct option in plants, water is transported through. So, which part, which vessel is responsible for water conduction? Xylem. Water absorption through roots can be increased by keeping the plants in shade, in dim light, under the fan, covered with polythene bag. So, what do we want in this case? We want more water to be absorbed through the roots. Now, if more transpiration happens, then there will be more suction pull. So more transpiration means more water is lost from the leaves. Therefore more pull that for upward movement of water and therefore there would be more absorption of water by the roots. So let us say this is root, this is stem and this is the tree. Right? Now when you keep it under the fan, what happens? Under the fan there is more wind speed. 
So due to this wind speed, the rate of transpiration will increase or so more transpiration will happen. When there is more transpiration, then there will be more transpiration pull. So there will be more absorption of water. But if you keep it in dim light or shade, the, since there is less light available, so the rate of transpiration will also be less. Therefore, the water absorption through roots will also be less. Question number four. Why is transport of materials necessary in a plant or in an animal? So why do why are we learning this entire lesson on transportation? That's because it is important that food or nutrients should reach each and every part of our body. Now in case of plants, food is prepared in the leaves of the plant, but it has to reach other parts also, for example, roots and stems. Therefore, transportation, transportation is necessary. Similarly, in case of human beings, if you talk about uh, the food, so when we eat food, the food gets digested and absorbed in the intestine. So now from intestine again, it needs to be transported to each and every cell of the body because each cell of the body needs food. So to, for transportation of food, for transportation of oxygen because again each and every cell of our body needs oxygen to oxidize food only then it will be able to release energy that is what we have learned in respiration that how food is oxidized to release energy so to transport these gases also the process of transportation is needed. Removal of waste from the body. If we keep accumulating wastes in the body, what will happen? The toxic level inside the body will increase and this might cause us a lot of diseases in that organism and it can even be fatal for that organism. Therefore, it is important that the wastes get removed. So for that purpose also, all the wastes need to be transported to the right place from where it can be excreted out of the body. Question number five, what will happen if there are no platelets in the blood? So you remember we spoke about the various components of blood like RBCs, WBCs, uh, plasma and platelets. So these platelets or thrombocytes, these are responsible for blood clotting. So whenever you get a cut, what happens? It starts bleeding at that place. But after some time, the bleeding stops due to a clot formation at the site of injury. So that clot formation happens due to the presence of platelets. If there are no platelets, no clot formation will happen and bleeding will continue for an indefinite period of time. So there will be excessive loss of blood which can even cause death of that organism. So blood clot formation would not take place if there are no platelets and therefore bleeding would not stop. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.